Hi, this is Bud at Sofa, and I thought I would review with you today the differences between the Alien B products and the Einstein products. And specifically, we're going to talk about the Alien B uh, B800, that's the original Alien B, the new Digi B800, but I also want to review with you uh, some comparisons with the Einstein E640. Now, before we go too far, I want to mention that we are not going to be talking about the Alien B400. Um, either the Legacy 400 or the new DigiB 400. Um, while they're great products and I'm sure they have a use and a lineup um, for some folks, just when we're trying to compare them with the Einstein, the differences become a bit too great to give you a nice apples to apples comparison. So, moving on. The first thing, and I guess the most obvious, is the power difference, right? The Einstein E640 is a powerful light, um, certainly provides a lot of value. All the way up at 640 watt seconds. Um, the, both the Alien B and the Digi B both are at 320 watt seconds, which is to say about half power. And uh, said yet another way, it's one stop less, which doesn't sound like much, but for some users, that one stop can represent uh, whether they get the shot they want at the aperture value they want or not. So something to consider when you're making your purchase. Um, moving on. Digital controls. Now, this is a big thing for me. Um, the Einstein, when it came out, was a, a complete winner uh, for a lot of reasons, one of which is that 10th f-stop control. One click of the button gives you a 10th f-stop change in power, either up or down, but so it was easy to dial in a very precise amount uh, of light exactly as you want it. The Alien B, uh, with its slider switch, of course, quite a bit less precise. It still can do the job, it's just, if you were looking to bring this light down by two-tenths of a f-stop in power, that's very hard to do precisely. The new DigiB solves this problem, again, with the digital controls. You just hit the button, down to two, two tenths of a stop, and you're good to go. So, something to think about. Now, while we're at it, the modeling lamp is a big difference between all of these. They use uh, three different types of modeling lamps between these. The original Alien Bees is using an Edison base screw-in light bulb sort of design. Um, it works well, it does put out a bunch of heat, and as a result, there is a limit to the highest wattage lamp you can put in here, so you wanna be real careful about that. Um, but if we move on to the Einstein, of course, it's using, again, um, a, a, an incandescent type bulb inside of there. It puts out a lot of heat. Of course, it's much smaller, it's much brighter at 250 watts. Um, and of course, as a result, puts out a lot of heat and can burn you, so something to consider. And now the new DigiB uses an LED modeling lamp, which is very heat safe. Um, I've put my hand on it while I was running for 15 minutes in my studio, and really, it's warm. It's about as warm as a hot cup of coffee would be in your hand. Um, you could theoretically burn yourself, I think I have to say that, but in truth, the risk is quite a lot less uh, for burns, but really um, nearly zero in my opinion for trying to ignite anything in your studio but again that's an opinion so something to consider that LED modeling lamp is a, a, a strong product movement I think in the DigiB lineup um, there we go now the weight of these is very different too now the big reason there's a weight difference is not only because there's less guts in the DigiB that is to say uh, smaller capacitors because it doesn't put out as much power as an Einstein but for some users they may find that weight an important um, factor especially if you're carrying more than one of these or perhaps if you're traveling with them um, the DigiB and the Alien B both weigh just under three pounds if I put them on a scale uh, that works out really well um, the Einstein weighs a bit more it oh geez just over four pounds maybe four and a half pounds it sounds like a lot um, and maybe it is or it isn't. Uh, again, the Einstein is a lot more light, so you have to put that in perspective. Just know that is a difference and you're good to go. The other thing, again, right there with that is size. The case dimensions are quite a bit different. Where the Alien B um, and the Einstein are very similar in size, uh, a bit less so if you add in the modeling lamp or the uh, shipping cover. The DigiB is quite a bit smaller, actually, and I have a feeling that the reason, of course, is because there is less capacitors inside. Uh, remember that the Alien B case, the legacy product, the B800, that case is the same size as the Alien B1600, which we're not considering here. That Alien B1600 has to have all the capacitors in. The Alien B800 only has half. 
So in an MEB 800, you're walking around with a lot of empty space inside of that case. In the DigiB, all they've done is reduce that, and that's how it becomes smaller. That's my opinion. I haven't ripped these apart to tell, but um, that's probably how it's done. Now, another big difference that you can't go too far in this discussion without getting into is the difference in flash duration. The Alien B and the Digi B both have reasonably long flash durations, what is completely normally normal in this industry. The Einstein, however, is a superior product in that you can use a mode, action mode, to get much shorter flash durations. Now, for the average person shooting the average stuff in a studio or location, it will not make a bit of difference. It really is not useful to you in that way. Where it is useful is stopping action in a very dim environment, for example, um, some sort of sports photo in a studio where you have um, you know, a youth um, uh, baseball player swinging a bat, or uh, you know, an athlete um, doing a karate chop in midair or something like this, where you really want to stop that action, that short flash duration will really help you out. Uh, drops of water, uh, splashes of water in a product setup. That is a light where the Einstein, um, that is a situation where the Einstein truly, truly shines and is something you should give strong consideration towards. And at that price point, returns an amazing value. So keep that in mind. Um, let's go to the exact opposite of uh, technical and go to color choices. Uh, for the, There are folks that like these quirky colors in the Alien Bs. The Alien B is available in seven different colors. I, me, I buy them in black, but Again, girl mileage may vary. I'll just point out that that um, DigiB is only available in four colors. Yeah, I just said that, only four colors. In what world does that make sense? Um, I think it's still awesome. And the Einstein's available in black. As I like to say, it's like a Model T. You get black or you get a black one, no problem. Um, going back to that Einstein though, there is a big difference in um, how that strobe tube is protected, which is to say the Einstein strobe tube is protected by a uh, glass dome, this uh, heat resistant glass dome, which for us here in our rental studio is fantastic because we have lots of users with lots of different experience levels. And if they accidentally um, run the front of the soft box or the soft box mount or the reflector mount into the front of this light, they're not bashing into that strobe tube every time. For us, that's a real big help to resist damage to the front of the unit. The Alien Bs and the Einstein, uh, the Alien B and the Digi B do not have that same level of protection on a strobe tube. I do think for the average user or um, the beginner user, it won't matter much. It really won't, simply because you own it. You're probably going to take a, quite a bit of care of it. And even if you did manage to break it, smash something into the front of it, you're talking about a $30 or so strobe tube, which is user replaceable. We have a video on how to do that online very easy to do. In fact, I recommend to most folks to have a spare on hand so they, uh, if they run into a problem, they can get back in service very quickly. Um, I will point out that the LED or the modeling lamp on the DigiB is protected. The strobe tube is not. Um, and I think that's uh, nice that they protected it. I wish there was some way they could protect that strobe tube uh, readily, but uh, nope. And um, I think that for the average user, it'll be just fine. Uh, another big difference with this DigiB that I was very impressed with is this slave eye that's located at the top of the light. That slave eye is just as sensitive as the one in the Einstein, which is fantastic. I love that they put a switch on the back to control it. Bear in mind this contrasts sharply with the Alien B. Now the Alien B Legacy product, this original one, has a slave eye in the back. It works fine. It's just the others are better. Now, the other uh, quirk of the Alien B is that you turn the slave eye on or off by plugging in, that's right, plugging in a sync cord into the back of the light, which is really useful, um, I think, when they're designing this to reduce the number of buttons on the back of the light and make it a little bit simpler for production. But in truth, I love the fact that the new DigiB has a button. Uh, and in the Einstein, of course, that it's controlled within the software selections. So take that or leave it. The last item, or one of the last few items I wanna talk about is power. Um, the Einstein has a huge advantage over the other products in that it has universal power or global power, which means it will take or accept power in from something really low, like 90, 90 volts or 95 volts, all the way up to 260 something volts 
which basically means you can take this light anywhere in the world, and as long as you have the right cord, which you can source locally very inexpensively, plug it into the wall and start shooting, it's gonna work fine. And for me, and it comes up about once or twice a year in my rental environment, someone will be traveling to Sweden or they'll travel to the UK, which light do they take with them? The answer is you're gonna take an Einstein. Why? Because you can pick up an inexpensive cord, plug it on the wall and keep going. There's, there's no adapters to worry about, you're good to go. That is not true for the Alien B lineup, either the DGB or the uh, regular Alien, uh, the regular Alien B. Those you would need a, a voltage converter and also a plug adapter. Is that a bad thing? I don't know, but there's a big advantage to the Einstein there in my mind. The last is the price point. Of course, the Alien B original is still at $280. I want to point out that's a supreme value. Um, that is just a crazy, crazy low price. The DigiB 800 at um, $350 is still a steal. I think it's a great price point. I think they're going to fly off the shelves at this price. The Einstein, of course, uh, at $500, it, boy, that seems expensive when you compare it to that $280. Uh, but in truth, that light is a steal. Uh, truth of the matter is, if you were uh, going through um, a yard sale and you saw this product at that price, it's that type of item you would snatch off the table to keep anybody else from getting it because it is that big of a deal. The Alien B lineup, the Einsteins are the deal of the century. The price difference between them is very modest um, and the price jumps up um, from uh, all the way at low at 280 all the way up to $500. The price difference between them in the world of studio photography is very different. Uh, is very, very little difference between them it's gonna be hard uh, to choose between them. So that said, I'm gonna make a separate video on what light is the right light for you. Uh, but for now, that's Bud and Sofa here in Manchester, New Hampshire, and we hope you find this video useful. Thanks.